Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to quickly and easily set up a Raspberry Pi running Pi Hole on your network. So just for reference, I'm going to have all the websites and products I use linked in the video description below. The first website we're going to need to go to is dietpi.com. So what dietpi is, it's the base OS that we're going to actually run on the Raspberry Pi. So dietpi.com, go to download, select Raspberry Pi, and then click download image here. After that's done downloading, you want to go to your downloads folder or wherever you have it downloaded and extract the folder. Once it's extracted, you just want to make sure that you can see the DietPy image there. We can close that. The next piece of software we're going to need is PuTTY. PuTTY is a free SSH terminal program that we can use to SSH into the Raspberry Pi to finish the configuration of it. So you go to putty.org and then you can click, you can download PuTTY here and then you can select whether you want the 32 or 64 bit, download that, and then install that. The next piece of software we're gonna use is Etcher. Now Etcher is a program that lets you write the DietPy image to your micro SD card to run on the Raspberry Pi. So that's bolina.io slash Etcher, and then you're gonna hit download for Windows or whatever OS you're using, download that, and then install that. After you're done with that, we're gonna run Etcher and at the same time, we're going to take our micro SD card and plug that into our computer. You can see it was detected right here. We're going to hit flash from file, select the diet pie image, hit open, and then hit flash. Now, depending on the speed of your card, this may take a few minutes, so I'll just fast forward through this part right here for you guys. After that's done, you can go ahead and exit the program. We're going to unplug our micro SD card from the computer, and we're going to insert it into our Raspberry Pi. Now some people like to configure this where they locally plug in a keyboard, mouse, and a monitor and do it that way. I don't like to do it that way. I like to configure it over the network. So I'm going to take this and I'm just going to plug an Ethernet cable directly into a switch I have here on my desk and power it up. I'm going to give that a couple minutes to boot up. And once it does, we're going to go into my router settings and find the IP address. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and log into our router. I've already logged into mine here. In my instance, I'm using a Ubiquiti setup, but um, the instructions are gonna be pretty similar for whatever router you're using. Once you're logged in, you're gonna to wanna to go into a client section or a section that shows you the devices on your network. So I'm gonna hit clients for me. And I'm gonna select wired because I'm actually physically plugged into there. And then I'm gonna just hit refresh to see if I can get the Diet Pi to pull up. Uh, there we go. So it looks like my Diet Pi has been assigned a IP address of 192.168.1.97. This will be different from you, just depends whatever the router wants to set it to. So we're going to take that IP, copy it, I'm going to minimize this, and now we're going to run PuTTY so we can SSH into it. So open up PuTTY, we're going to paste the IP address in where it says hostname, hit open, we're going to hit yes, and then we're going to be greeted with the login prompt. So the default login information is root for the username, and then diet pi for the password. Then we're going to just hit OK. And this is going to go through an initial setup process, and this will take a few minutes, so I'll fast forward through this as well. All right, once that's finished, it's going to ask us if we want to opt in or out <clears throat> of the diet pi survey. I'm going to opt out, hit OK. Let that go through some more. Then it's going to say, do you want to reset the uh, default password. Uh, normally you want to change this, but for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to leave it as default so it's faster and simpler. So I'm going to hit cancel. Uh, saying you want to change the Unix user passwords. Obviously you guys change this stuff to make it as secure as possible. I'm doing cancel for the video. Serial console is currently enabled. Would you like to disable it? Uh, no, we can just leave that. Hit cancel. Okay. Now for the DietPy software, we're not going to add anything else. We just want the pure image. So we're going to hit install and then OK. It's going to say DietPy was unable to detect any additional software. Do you wish to continue with DietPy as a pure minimal image? Yes, we do. So hit OK. And let that go through the install process. OK, once that's finished, uh, now we can actually install PyHole on this. So I'm going to go to the GitHub page for the PyHole project. And if we scroll down, there's a one-step automated install command. I'm going to copy and paste this into the terminal. I'll have this in my video description as well for you guys. Go back to the terminal. We're going to right click to paste it and then just hit enter. There you can see the PyHole logo and then this is going to go ahead and install PyHole. Now it says this installer will transform your device into a network ad blocker. Hit OK. 
Pyhole is free but powered by your donation. If you guys like this and it helps you out, feel free to drop them a donation. Pyhole is a server, so it needs a static IP address. Yes, we're going to assign a static IP to the Pi. Hit OK. It's going to ask us to select upstream DNS providers. You can hit Google. I personally like to use Cloudflare. Uh, here's the default uh, tracking list or blocking list that it adds. Uh, we're going to add more later in the video, but for now you can just uh, hit OK to allow those. Uh, your protocols. So I'm running IPv4 and 6 on my network. Most people are probably only running 4. So just hit OK. Do you want to use your current network settings as a static IP address? No, we're going to set a different one. So we're going to hit no. And then right here is where we're going to set it. But we need to go into our router to configure some stuff real quick. So I'm going to open up this, go to our router. And then um, usually it's going to be in your settings. You're going to want to go to network settings and then wherever your LAN settings are in the router you're using, edit them. And what you want to make sure of is that you have a DHCP range that's going to be outside of the static IP. So I've set my range to be 1.6 to 1.254. So everything before .6 I can use as a static IP and I don't have to worry about the router messing with it. So my gateway is already 1.1. So for the Pi, I'm going to sign at 1.5. Then we're going to go to our GHCP name server setting and we're going to change it from auto to manual because we need to direct it to the Raspberry Pi running Pi hole. So I'm going to type in 192.168.1.5 since that's the static IP I want to use. We'll scroll down and hit save. After that, we can minimize this and go back to the Pi Hole configuration. So I'm going to backspace this and change it to 1.5. Hit OK. Enter your desired gateway. 1.1 uh, .1 is my gateway, so I'm going to leave that. Hit OK. Are these settings correct? 1.5 for the IP and gateway 1.1. .1. Yep, that's correct, so I'm going to hit yes. There's the IPv6. Admin install interface, yes. You want to install that, that's how you're going to configure it. Hit OK. You want to install the web server, yep, hit OK. You want to log queries, uh, this is optional, I just leave it on, hit OK. Privacy mode, I do show everything, hit OK. And then it's going to go through the setup process more. After that's finished, it's going to show us our information. So here's our uh, IP address of the Pi. And then important, here's the uh, password it's assigned to log into Pi-hole. So we're going to go ahead and copy that password. I'm going to open up a notepad and I'm just going to paste that in there for now. And you're going to hit OK. Boom. And then now we need to set the static IP address for the actual uh, diet pi instead of just pi hole, which is what we just did. So to do that, we're going to do diet pi dash config. You're going to scroll down to network options adapters. Hit OK. And then we're going to scroll up to Ethernet. Hit OK. And you can see the mode is set to DHCP. We've got to change that to static. So highlight that and hit OK. Now it's set to static, and we're going to configure the IP. So hit that, and we're going to change it to 1.5. OK. Static mask 255.255.255.0. That's fine. Static gateway 0.1. No, we got to change that. So instead of 0 0.1, it's going to be 1.1. OK. DNSs, we can leave that alone. They're using Google DNSs. Uh, now we're going to hit save all changes and restart networking. Okay. All connection will drop. Yeah, we got it. Would you like to purge all the Wi-Fi stuff? Sure. We're not using Wi-Fi, so it doesn't matter anyway. Um, now it's going to update that stuff and then do a restart, but we won't be able to reconnect to it in this terminal because we're connecting with the default IP address that the router originally assigned it. So after that stuff stops updating, I'm going to just close this out and then uh, try and reconnect to it with our new static IP address. Okay, it's been about a minute, so I'm going to open up a new PuTTY terminal. And I'm going to type in our static IP, which is 192.168.1.5. Hit open. Okay, now we're prompted with the login terminal. So just to test, it should be root and diet pi. Okay, everything is up and running and that looks all good. So we're done with the configuration in terms of uh, PuTTY. So we're going to close this. Now we're going to open up our browser. And what we're going to do is actually go to the IP address of the Pi itself. So type in the IP of whatever static IP you set for the Pi. So mine's uh, 192.168.1.5. Hit enter. Now normally you got to type in slash admin after the IP address to get to the configuration panel. 
but they give you a nice little logo or link right here. So click that. Then per, we're presented with the uh, interface right here. We're going to go to login and then it's going to ask for that password. So remember that password that we saw? Go ahead and copy that and paste that in there. Login and then boom, we're logged into our Pi. So I'm going to just check on the settings real quick for this. Make sure everything's okay. <clears throat> so our IPv4 is 192.168.1.5. Okay, that looks good. Uh, DNS, Cloudflare, that looks good. Okay. So now what we can do is start playing with the uh, uh, block list. So if we go to um, the uh, settings and block lists, we go to group management pages. Here's where the block lists are. So how the block list works, basically it's a big text file that has all the IP addresses or web addresses of stuff you want to block. So the ones I'm personally using, there's this one that's called hosts.oisd.nl. And if I actually go to it, you'll see it's just a huge list of IPs that uh, people have found to be bad. So you're just going to copy that address and you're going to paste it in here and then we're going to hit add and you can see it's been successfully added to the list but we're not done yet we still have to save it before it'll actually take effect uh, the other block lists I like to use are from a website called firebog.net links in the description again and then they've got these all these block lists that people have submitted with a bunch of stuff now I'm not using all of these I'm probably using like 60 percent of these uh, some of them have a lot of false positives. Um, you got to kind of just go through them individually and select the ones you want. But uh, a good one that you can block is tracking and telemetry lists. So I'm going to actually um, grab all the ones that they have right here that are not crossed out. Copy that. Go back to our pie hole and you can just paste all those in there at the same time and hit add. And you'll can see, you can see it just automatically adds them individually. And then to actually finish this, you've got to click right here where it says, uh, 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 please run pihole g or update your gravity list online. So we're going to hit online. Then we're going to hit update. So now this is going to update and actually put into effect the new block list you've added. Once that's finished, it might take a minute or two. Uh, you're going to see the success and it's going to show you all the list that it's just added. So now we can go back to dashboard and you can go and look at your domains on block list and that will show you all the uh, new domains that have been added. Um, so at this point, that's really much all you have to do. Um, this will start showing activity once new devices start pulling requests over the network, and then you can see everything from uh, the top permitted domains to the top blocked domains to the top clients on your network that are actually uh, pulling on those requests. If you guys have any more questions or comments, leave them below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.